Okay everyone, we're going to be mixing our tertiary colors and our grayscale. And I've switched up my waters now so that I have a rinsing water and a mixing water, yeah? Or dirty, clean, yes? So this is where I will clean my brushes out. And when they're nice and clean, I can check here, yeah? Make sure that it's coming off white, and then I can come here for my mixing water, okay? So that I'm never coming to my yellow with a dirty brush, because this is gonna get dirty real fast. Okay, so we have our primary and our secondaries mixed, and now I'm gonna move on to our tertiaries, yeah? So when we're mixing, remember, you always wanna start with your least dominant, your, your most uh, color that's easiest to be affected, yeah? So we're gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna do my yellow orange. So first I wanna mix orange, yeah? This means you have to mix your secondary colors again, folks. So we're gonna mix orange, and then I can go and mix the red orange or yellow orange first that goes here, and then I'll mix the red orange that goes here. Yeah, I'm just kind of setting my palette up similarly so it's easy to follow. Yeah, and you can do the same. I suggest you work on a dinner plate, it's probably your best palette for this project. So I'm going to mix quite a bit. Yeah, because I have two swatches to make I have my yellow orange and my orange red. So I want a lot of that original, true, secondary yellow or yellow, the orange color. Yeah, all right. So, cleaning the brush in the dirty. And making sure I'm good to go before I come into my magenta. Now, I would say this is, ooh, I don't know, we might be a little dark on this one because of my mixture. I might be pushing it into the red orange right now. Actually, that might be perfect for red orange. I might just call it good. And that way, whatever's left, I'll just add yellow to it and go the other way. So I would say this, if I go and I test it and I hold it up next to, you can see that that's much darker red. Put it right down in here, or darker orange, I mean. And this is a great red orange. and I have a decent water to paint ratio. It's coming off of my brush really nicely, getting good coverage. Remember our goal is to cover the whole paper and to eliminate brush strokes, yeah? So if you look at those student examples, you're gonna see that there's a lot of really nice flat color. That all happens here, yeah? Where you come back to your swatches maybe one or two times so that you have nice flat swatch of color, okay? We don't want brush strokes and we don't want the white of the paper showing because that affects our perception of the color, right? It appears lighter because white is a value, yes? Oops, I'm kind of lifting now. Great, so now I have my true orange and my red orange. I'm gonna mix my yellow orange next. This needs to get cleaned up. And I can work from what I already have mixed. So I have the red-orange mixed here. I'm just gonna bring a little of it into my yellow. And that way this will stay mainly yellow dominant. And then I can slowly add to it. So remember we want it to be in between this color and this color. Yeah, these are the two colors we're trying to split the difference, okay? And I'd say we need to go just a little bit more orange not gonna pull from the red, right? Because this is already mixed, so I need to use this orange. You don't wanna do your secondary color mixing in your tertiary, because you mix that secondary color first and work from it. So working from orange is how I'm getting there. Okay, I think a little more. And that might be just right. My concern is maybe not having enough paint right here, but we'll see. I may have to remix. Yeah, that looks a bit lighter. Okay. Oh, now it's going on the paper and it's not looking so light. It looks like it might be pretty close. So I'm gonna go back and add a bit more yellow and come back to this. Make 
sure that's clean. Yellow is so vulnerable, y'all. It will be, it will get pushed. If you have any green in this water or blue, you will see it show up in your, in your yellow. So this is why we want to have a clean, clean water source. Okay, let's bring some more yellow into this. Again, we need good coverage. There we go. Okay. Much better, but I'm having some opacity issues because I had a bit of water on my brush, so we'll come at it a couple times. Good, and this might be an example of a swatch that I might have to do more than once. I'm assuming you all might have to do that, but you do want to test your colors before you commit to the full swatch. You know, you have all this extra space, so just test it out in a small spot before you commit to the swatch so you don't waste too much paper. I think this will work out well. This is going to stand in between these two, or the yellow, orange. And once you get them placed next to each other, you might have a better idea. So I'm going to keep mixing this. I feel like we're going to need another coat. I have a lot of the white of the paper showing through, and I want to make sure that this gets good coverage. So I'm going to continue to mix for this. Pulling from our parent orange colors. Mm, I'm getting a little bit of paint boogers. <laughs> Just keep those out of your way. They might happen because the paint dries on your palette. There we go, that's good coverage. Wonderful, okay. So now our two, I've done the yellow-orange and we've done red-orange. So now we're gonna move on to, I'm gonna continue working with our yellow, yeah? I'm gonna go yellow-green since it's out and ready. So first let's mix the green. start with again our most vulnerable color yellow and remember I need a lot of green because we're mixing yellow green and blue green from this I'm gonna try to make sure I don't pull any of my orange into it I'm gonna pull just a little bit of blue Say again, this is probably one part blue to at least four, maybe five parts yellow. And this should get us to that nice green. You want to always pull your paint towards the middle. If you spread it out, you're going to have a thin layer of green all over your palette. Right? Good, I think that worked out quite well. So this is our parent green. And now we want to take some of this to the side, add it to yellow, and then we'll add some blue to this to turn it. Okay, more yellow. Okay, so remember we're mixing for a yellow green, so we're going to start with our yellow and add small amounts of green to it until it hits that mark that we're after of being halfway between yellow and green. And you can see how quickly yellow will shift towards any color it's introduced to. That is a beautiful yellow green. All right. I'm going to paint this on, and then I'm also going to take this green and go over one more layer because I'm noticing, you see how my green has a bit of patchiness to it? So I'm going to do one more coat with my true green. But here, let's see how our yellow green is looking. Beautiful. I love this color so much. Great. 
this will be the one I do my transfer demo on because it's really easy to see. So hopefully y'all are designing, you're thinking about what it is you want to put onto these swatches, right? Because these are two parts, yeah? The mixing is one thing. Mm -hmm. Then there's the designing, the cutting, the assembling, yeah? And that's its own time-consuming process. Y'all have had quite a bit of experience with cutting with our last project. So you should be able to navigate this one with some ease. Okay, all right, we're gonna let that, you can see that that's gonna need probably another coat, so I will come back to it. I'm always trying to just test my, there we go. All right, I'm gonna grab my true green here and just do another coat. solid opaque color with minimal brush strokes and none of the white of the paper showing through. Okay, great. Good coverage. That's going to dry nice and solid. Good. And I've got my secondaries. As these are drying, I'm starting to kind of compare my yellow orange to my true orange and my red. I'm seeing this again might be need another another lap. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next on here, I'll do uh, the blue-green. Okay, so we're going to take our lighter value. I'm trying to kind of do a pressure with a little bit of a roll, a spin, so that all of that paint doesn't get wasted. Yeah, gets pushed out onto the palette. Again, this is a very vulnerable color, right? Because it's mostly yellow. So I don't need to add a ton of this blue. You can see again, it's probably four to one ratio. And making sure that you can push this color right to halfway, right? Halfway between its two parent colors. And we're gonna need a little bit more, yeah? kind of pushing it almost into a true or green color. <laughs> okay, let's, I don't want to waste so much of this. So I'm just going to dedicate this side to green so I don't have to waste all the paint on my brush and rinse it out again. Oh good, that's definitely pushing it closer to a blue-green. This is another one. The tertiary colors are really, I think, some of the more, I don't know, I love these colors. The blue-green and the yellow-green are really fun to watch come together. Okay, so this, I think, could go a little more blue. Remember, we want to see both parent colors in it so that it's clear to us that this is a mixture of two. And this is why the color wheel is such a great learning tool, right? The simplicity of it is, is really nice, right? But each color, each of those um, primary colors added together creates all of these secondary and tertiary. Great. So I think this is probably a good mixture. Let's put it on paper and test it out. Mm, it's still looking like a true green. Almost like a darker green. You know what? I'm going to paint this out because this looks like a true green color that I probably could use. Yeah, it looks more true green than this does, doesn't it? That looks more like a yellow green now. Well, I'm going to mix them both, and that way I have options. But once I see them together as paint chips, right, I might be able to make my decision a little more clearly.
Good, so I'm going to keep mixing blue into this so that we can push this into blue-green. There we go, now we can see more blue. The challenge is once it goes on paper, it seems like that blue really disappears. There we go. Okay, so now we are officially at blue-green. I can see both of those parent colors just in my initial mixture. Okay. And hopefully as this goes down, you'll see ends up turning into almost a vermilion. Hmm, I don't know, it's still not reading like a blue-green. I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, on my palette it really reads as blue, but when I get it down to here, on my paper, it's coming out as more of a vermilion green. going. <laughs> okay, oops, that's not clean. Good example. Why we use the dirty and clean water. There we go. It's coming off the rim. Okay. So this needed more blue, so I'm gonna take it all. still reads as like a vermilion. I'm going to add more blue before I commit to that. It looks pretty good once it's spread out. It's definitely reading as a more in the green family than in the blue at all. So yeah, a little more blue. is the side I was pulling from. I'm going to keep it there so that my blue parent color can stay kind of pure. Okay, let's see how this looks on paper. There we go, that's a blue-green. Nice, look at how many attempts that took me, folks. This is a really beautiful color, and I'm glad I finally found it. <laughs> okay, so making sure that you have, because I do feel now that I've reworked this a couple times, that this is more of a true green feeling than this one is. This one might work for my yellow green after all. I don't know. So I'm going to wait and see how these end up. And I need to give this definitely another coat. I'm trying to work in different directions to cover up brush strokes. So we are almost finished with our tertiaries, and then I want to talk to you briefly about how to transfer your image, yeah, as well as our uh, color swatches. Nice. Oops, I'm getting paint boogers in there. <laughs> so the paint dries and creates maybe a little bit of dried sort of texture, so make sure you don't have any of that showing up in your swatches. 
Yeah, so because I had a bit of water on my brush, I'm fighting the brush strokes here. And I just need to come back with that in a minute. Great, so while that's drying, let's move on to our, our last, our blue purple and our red purple. Got to mix some purple first, yeah? Okay, so purple was roughly half and half, so I'm going to start with our magenta. So we've mixed our purple. I'm gonna make sure I have all my parent colors out of the brush so it's not showing up in my streaks when I'm painting. Now you wanna make sure it's fully mixed before you start to use your brush. Check your bristles, make sure you don't have a bunch of those raw, raw parent colors in there. Good, so I have my purple, and now I need to just push it in both directions, yeah? Let's go with the lighter one first. So I'm gonna bring some purple over here. Great, so because we want this to be a red-purple, we're going to make sure it's a lot of red with a little bit of purple. And remember, we want it to appear to be partway between these two, but that doesn't mean that's exactly what the mixture looks like, right? The color goal is to be halfway between parents, but it doesn't mean it's 50-50 of those parent colors. That's what you will learn by mixing these. Yeah. Okay, let's bring in a little bit more of our red to try to push it towards pink. Okay, I'm going to kind of keep it close to purple just so I can see. And yeah, that definitely is coming off as a good purple. And now that I have them in comparison, I'm looking at my purples, you know, which one is reading as more of a true purple and as another one looking more like a violet or a blue purple. And I do think that's the case. Great, so this tertiary color that I intended to mix might stand in well for my purple. And my original purple is feeling pretty blue now. So let's mix one more that is my red purple. So we'll start with this magenta since I'm not going to be using it again. This is my last mixture. I'm going to take this purple and bring it into the red, the magenta. That way we will definitely be magenta dominant. Tension. Remember, this is our parent red, the true red. So trying to find one that goes closer to blue, to true, and has a bit more magenta in it, or red, is our goal. And I think when we let these dry, we'll know more for sure if I've nailed it and if I'm done. If not, there's more paint and Bristol paper. Keep going until you feel like you've hit each of them. Use your color wheel to test to make sure that you've accurately mixed 
your, um, oops, should have dried the brush. Just brought a bunch of water into there. Water can really reactivate like old stuff that's on the palette, so be careful, you'll get a bunch of boogers. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry so that this doesn't continue to remove paint. And now I have my primaries, uh, secondaries, even though I've done some recalibrating, and some tertiaries, red, orange, yellow, orange. This is probably gonna be my yellow, green. Maybe this one, I don't know. Uh, this is my blue, green. This is my true purple blue purple red purple yeah and now i want to talk to you about how to take your design and put it onto one of these yeah very simple i want you to take whatever it is you've been drawing on i'll show you my examples so these are my sketches yeah uh, i am looking at what's around me in my environment trying to take in what's there out of a manatee and an airplane and clouds and palm trees i landed on a dumpster so I really like this idea. What I did was I took the back side, put it up on the window, and created graphite transfer paper. Yeah, so I'm just gonna place it exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna put it on my yellow green and trace it for you, okay? Now you wanna make sure that you've chosen a design that you don't mind cutting out 12 times. Not just cutting out 12 times, but tracing 12 times too. And then gluing and affixing and all those great things that come after you've finished mixing your colors. I do think the fire on this one might be a good opportunity to play with complementary colors, but I also think it could work really well just as a single color. So I'm gonna play with that. I've decided I don't need that detail, it's a bit much. Okay, let's lift and see what our coverage is like. Voila, dumpster fire. <laughs> okay. And then you will take that, remove it, cut it out, do it over and over and over again on all of your swatches. Okay, I'll do one more video for our grayscale and then we'll be done.